Welcome back to another pen talk. Thanks for tuning in. Today we're going to be back on a familiar topic for many of my viewers. Kind of a giveaway. It's a Wingsung fountain pen in this traditional Lamy like box. Very uh, useful packaging. You know, works both for uh, protecting it for shipping and also as a uh, retail display. You know, they have your click go information on the back, which not much here that's useful to me, but I'm certain for those of that uh, can read the language and understand the numbers there, this might be useful. Yes, they are fountain pens. So let's uh, take a look at one of them. These are the same pens, just in two different colors, and we'll explain how I ended up with that in a, in a minute. So as we bring out the pen, uh, the first thing we'll notice is it's familiar for those vintage folks. It certainly does have a lot of the characteristics of a Parker 51. Pull-off cap, clutch ring, hooded nib, but there's an ink window, which uh, none of the Parker 51s had. So how do you fill it? Well. If you can look closely, you'll see there's a little seam here. They did a good job at uh, blending that in. It's not going to be completely uh, disappear, but it's uh, very good. So we just unscrew this blind cap, or whatever you want to refer to it as, and you'll see there's a piston. And it's made out of metal, which is nice. And that's how it fills. It's a pump filler. So you press down on this piston repeatedly with the nib immersed in your ink. And after about maybe five or six pumps, I haven't filled one yet, so we'll go through that exercise and we'll see what it takes to get it filled. Each time you push down, it expels air and pulls up ink when you let go, when the diaphragm uh, returns back to its original shape. So that's cool. And if you'll notice here at the end, um, there's a five millimeter hexagonal nut there. So if you ever need to take this apart for repairing it, you can use a regularly commonly available tool, which is to me a significant improvement over what Parker did in their design, which required a specially threaded tool to remove and, and uh, repair the diaphragm. I don't have a box end wrench, so I'm not going to attempt to try to remove it. Uh, over time, I'll probably get myself a nice 5 millimeter wrench just so BI can be prepared. So you may ask why I have two of these. Well, one of my viewers saw an auction for this 601, and he said, oh, they're um, selling the touchdown filling system. And it actually, that auction that I thought I bid on had what it appeared to be a touchdown filler. Regrettably, I did not do a screenshot. So when I went back to it a day later after I already purchased it, I noticed that the only thing there were the pump fillers. And I contacted the seller and they were very responsive. And they said that that's the only filling system on the 601. So therefore, they can only send me these two pens would have the same filling mechanism. And I thought this one would have a touchdown one. So this is the same type of thing. Not a color that I'm really enthralled about, but I have two of them. So that's nice. We get to see about consistency in manufacturing and design. So you may ask, how does that compare to a real 51? So here they are side by side. The 51 is slightly longer. It has a traditional gray jewel at the top of the cap. Now there's just a metal jewel here, which is not unusual for this design, but it still has that same cone shape to it. The clips are very, very similar. The 601 is slightly longer. Both of them have the model of the pen engraved at the bottom of the cap. You know, there's your 51 and there's your 601. Both pull off caps. And the caps are similarly shaped. You can move them from one pen to the other, but they don't seem to fit really well. So not something I would do on a regular basis. You know, this is that nice stainless steel is kind of like, um, I guess like a sandblasted finish. It's really a nice finish versus your standard chrome plating on the 601. But, you know, it is a different style of pen. I mean, it, it, it does mimic 
And from um, my sources, at one time Parker was planning to make these pens in China, so they brought over all the equipment. They taught, I guess, some companies to make them, but decided then not to make them. So they left all that expertise there, and the Chinese then started making their own. But obviously, as we can see, they made some interesting improvements over that original design. One thing I was happy to see is the documentation that came with the pen has actually been updated to reflect the design of this pen. My previous documentation didn't really reflect the actual pen. That one side isn't too useful, but this side is great because it shows you all the parts. And what's really cool is that looks pretty much exactly like a the diaphragm that goes into a vacuumatic and that looks like the little plug that goes in. You can see the threading, how the pieces are put together. Shows you that breather tube on the section. And with other ones, there's your filling instructions. You know, shows you pushing down. You know, it's hard to tell whether it's telling you how many times to push down, but like I say, it took about seven to eight to fill the pen. And of course, it shows you removing the section for uh, thorough cleaning, which uh, is easy to do. So I was very happy to see these updated instructions. Here we show the 601 half disassembled. I think this is all most people generally need to do for maintaining the pen. This uh, section just unscrews from the barrel. You can see there's a nice o-ring there, nice fine threads. Would definitely add some uh, silicone uh, grease to this when I reassemble it. When I disassembled it, there was some type of um, sealant here on the threads. It was kind of a white sealant, so I cleaned that up and I'll replace it with silicone grease. At the business end, the filling end, we can see one major innovation and change. You have a five millimeter nut that holds that diaphragm assembly into the barrel. It's threaded in using the same threads that the blind cap uses. So that's a, a very good intelligent design. This plunger is a nice piece of metal, solid metal, so that's nice. In the uh, Parkers they were plastic. Uh, originally they started out being like an aluminum plunger it locked in but had springs in it that was complex and they eventually went to a simplified design similar to this one here which is also what you'll find in the Edison pump fillers. I mean this is made well. I'm not attempting to unscrew this. There's no reason to take uh, this um, filling assembly apart. It's just good to know that it is easily uh, fixed. And as we saw from the instruction manual, it looks like it's a similar design. You could use a diaphragm from a Parker or any vacuumatic type of uh, filling mechanism pen to repair if that's ever needed. But hopefully within the lifetime of this pen, you will not need that. When you're reassembling the pen, what I've noticed um, is that when you put this section in, there's no way to key it. So when you screw on the section, you need to see how the alignment will go. Uh, that's a two-step process in my mind. You maybe could have done something to mark stuff when you took it apart, but I didn't do that. So this is that uh, filler tube, which is used in most to pump fillers. So how that works is, is when you press down on the lever, the air, which is at the top, is expelled out this tube, and then ink is pulled back up. So as you pump multiple times, you're pushing out air through the tube, pulling an ink uh, up through the feed. So it's a tried and true classic design. So I, it's just amazed to see that in this pen made in China. So we're going to reassemble this and uh, eventually ink it up. A lot of people may compare this to the 618. And I think the main comparison is the feed and section. But here that feed is um, a clear transparent feed which is in keeping with the whole transparent element of this pen which is extremely good. I've now seen some pens with uh, clear design uh, piston seals so 
that would be really cool if they uh, eventually come out with a model of this one which had clear here too so that would be uh, a very nice design change this uh, cap screws on where the other one is a uh, push to put the cap back on so I just thought I'd just uh, give you an idea of, of how these two pens kind of compare the clips are you know, again, it's that still that kind of aero design, but this is a more modern aero design. This is more in keeping with the original Parker 51. Here they are side by side, and without knowing that the brown one was the actual Parker 51, I think it would be hard pressed to just quickly pick out the Wingsung 601. It is uh, very, very, very similar. They are still on eBay as, as this time I'm filming this. Uh, the prices are reasonable. They're in line with, you know, your 618s and your 698s and, and your other piston fillers. And this is certainly a unique filling mechanism. Uh, I have to admit that I never expected to see the Chinese um, bring back a filling system that was first brought on board by, by Parker in the, in the 30s. And they quickly, you know, it lasted maybe 10 or 15 years, and then they went to that other filling system, which uh, has a lot of uh, emotion attached to it, is the Aerometric filler, which has a, a sack in it, more traditional sack, but then it's just easier because it has a covering on it and a presser bar that you can use to fill it with. Uh, but sadly, this design kind of went out of production, I would say, in the late 40s, and they they moved over to that aerometric filler and then eventually that supported using cartridges or aerometric fillers. Uh, so it was evolutionary step uh, from the design and manufacturing from Parker. Let's take a close-up look of these two pump fillers. The one here on the left in plastic is the uh, Parker 51. And here's the Wingsung 601. You can see that the Parker 51 has those threads, which then you need a device that clamps on there to unscrew that insert. Whereas the 601 has just a nut, a five millimeter nut there, which uh, you could get a wrench it, uh, to use to remove it. And it's nice with the um, metal piston. I don't think it's necessary. I've never had any issues with the plastic plunger in the 51, but you know, again, they made some changes to it, and some of those changes is, uh, uh, has improved the pen in both its use and also in its potential uh, maintenance. So what ink to use is always a question, but I try to focus on some new inks that I've had, so we're going to put this blockhouse sepia in the pen. And I'm going to try a little bit different view, so maybe you can see how the ink gets drawn up into the pen. So we'll just take the barrel, remove the line to cap. The other thing I wanted to note is I put a little silicone grease on all threads, just a little bit, and I think that helps them mesh and you know reduces the possibility of uh, cross-threading or damaging the threads. So we're going to insert the pen into the ink, and you can see that window hopefully. And as you press down once, you can see ink come hopefully in through that feeder tube. There goes some ink dropping into the barrel. You can see each time you put the plunger down, more ink comes up. Now the plunger got stuck. I may need to put some silicone grease on the plunger. Yeah, so I pumped it like four or five times now. And as you can see, that ink window is full of ink now. So let's put this thing on paper and see how this nib performs. So you'll see that the ink is fairly full. After I finished that initial video of uh, filling, when I turned the pen upside down like this, the ink window was all clear. So I did a few more pumps. And you need to pull up the plunger. It might be because the pen is new and maybe the that bladder in here is a little bit stiff or I might do some lubrication on the plunger but I had to just pull it up but it's not a big deal you're not going to be doing that that often but as you can see we got a pretty 
full fill and that took about eight or nine pumps. So this is a good size pen. It fits nicely in the hand. You know, you have to like this section because if you want a certain diameter, you need to hold it in a certain spot. If you want to be close to the nib, which, you know, with that hooded nib, you probably, this is where most people would hold it, which is really a nice spot. I think anybody can find a comfortable spot to hold this pen. It posts very deeply, very securely. You feel that cap because it is a metal cap. will give you the weights of the pen and the cap. So, you know, I think I could write with this posted and that's what we'll do. Well, my first responses uh, on the nib are I positive. I would call this an extra fine. I would say this nib is more similar to the uh, Parker 51 nibs that I've experienced than anything else. So I uh, think that they could have done something differently, and I'll show you what I, what I think about this. So those of you that have written with a 51, I mean, the nib gives you... A decent amount of feedback but there's no character no expression to it it's not quite as smooth as some other nibs so obviously the pen to compare it to is the wing sung 618 so we have one inked up here and let's compare that I mean this is much smoother and this is more like a medium fine than the extra fine I mean, both of these have excellent flow characteristics. So if you compare those two, you can see that. I think this is uh, Lake of Fire by Robert Oster. So it's two different inks, but there's definitely uh, a difference between these two nibs. I prefer the nib in the 618. And right now I'm not in the mood to try to swap nibs around and things like that. So I'm going to you know, keep the 601 as found and see if it's something that grows on me. So I'm, I'm thoroughly impressed with the engineering and manufacturing of this pen. So I've been doing some ratings, not consistently, but we're going to rate this a solid eight. And, you know, it is what it is. And that's what I think that I, I always try to look at pens for what they are, not what I think they should be or what I expect them to be. Um, do I like this pen? Yes. Uh, could it become a daily writer? Yes. Um, but to me, the most impressive part is the whole filling mechanism design. Uh, it's just, it's a unique animal into itself with uh, certain parts which uh, mimic uh, other pens, but obviously some parts which are quite uh, unique to this pen and, and quite unexpected. So uh, thank you for watching. This sepia ink is growing on me. So this is the end of this video. Hope you have many great pen experiences. Explore the world of nibs, inks, and papers. Until next time, bye.